she was okay. You know, I said, yeah, all right. So, <laughs> I, uh, I, was, I was in love with her. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Hello everybody, this is Bud Brown with, hey, the best part about uh, living here is meeting new friends, new people, visitors, and expats that already live here. So I wanted you to meet uh, this couple that uh, very influential on me with my uh, new uh, YouTube channel. You probably uh, heard me talk about Brian and... Uh, <clears throat> His YouTube channel, uh, uh, Foreigner Farming in the Philippines. Well, I have an opportunity to uh, get together with him here at Gabby's Bistro on the boulevard. And uh, we're just chit chatting, and I'd like to introduce him to you. A lot of you know him already, you're subscribers to his channel. But there may be some that uh, uh, are subscribers to my channel that haven't really met. Uh, Brian, so I want to introduce him to you. Hello. This is the lovely Mauricio. Uh, Mauricio, right. Now, uh, I'm curious, and I think that my subscribers too would be, uh, would be curious about your story. Everybody has a story. How did they get here? What is your connection to the Philippines? And you are from the States. I mean, you're an American, so maybe you can just kind of uh, tell us your story. How? Well, I am from the U.S. and from California. Uh, I had a business there, uh, ice cream trucks, uh, ice cream truck business. And uh, it was a long row of, of, of basically, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word and I can't. They were all doors in the front. They were just basically were out in a long row of with other businesses. And at the front of this complex was a mechanic. Uh, and he was married to a Filipino. And I've known I've known Martin for a while, years, and uh, and it was kind of around in the process of him, for the process of him meeting and eventually marrying uh, his, his Filipino. And so I, I, I was kind of watching from afar uh, to how this how this all went and his trials and tribulations, because it's never it never seems like it's a smooth run. Uh, for a foreigner before they end up in, uh, in getting the, the lovely bride, if that's what they're looking for. And so uh, she had family. Uh, well, of course, I met uh, Martin, uh, met Miriam. Uh, she came back to the States. Uh, they have, a, they have a, a son. And so I met her and was chatting with her. And of course, every Filipino that you meet, it seems like, well, you should get it. Yeah. If you're single, they'll tell you, well, you, should, you should find a right. Filipino and you'll get married, right? Sure. Well, you know, okay, so um, I started uh, getting interested in the Philippines, chatting online with, with some ladies, and with varying degrees of success, uh, is, which is often the case. Yeah, right. But I, I met, uh, what's your name here? And <laughs> I met Marcel online, and we chatted for uh, a long time, uh, almost a year, nine months, right? And so then decided to come to the Philippines. And uh, she's from North Carolina, which is not the safest place for foreign in the Philippines, right? Yeah. So, had uh, you been to the Philippines before? I've never been. To never. The Philippines. Okay. Never. Uh, actually, I've never been out of the United States before. Oh. This, this was my first. This is my first time flying over the ocean. Right? So, um, really didn't. Really wasn't comfortable going to North Carolina. Because uh, it's close to the, the Muslim Montana, right. so she could hear them shooting in the distance. Oh, bombs. bombs going off in town. Oh, gee. Where she lived. So it wasn't it wasn't for me, right? But because I had met Martin and Miriam, uh, she had family on the whole in Leland, and so we kind of figured that uh, we would stay there for a while and get to know each other. We we had a, a base of operations there in Leland at this at this family's house. And so uh, we could get to know each other, and we could go around and look around, and and, and do it that way. And uh, she was okay, you know. I said, "Yeah, all right." So <laughs> I, uh, I was I was in love with her. Sure. Her, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So we decided. Uh, so 
so, but I was still, <laughs> I was still working at that time. Uh, I've never been a wealthy guy, uh, and at that time was still still running the ice cream company. And so I had to go back home, right? And worked for how how long did I go home that time? Two months? Or was it was nine okay. months. Yeah. After we met the first time. Yeah. So it was nine months that I went home. Wow. And saved up some money. And then came back and we looked for, we went all over. Because, you know, I'm not a, as we were talking before, I'm not yeah. a travel guy. Yeah. You, you get off the boat, you go somewhere in the Philippines yeah. for me. Yeah. You get off the boat, and there's yeah. the ocean, there's the hills. Yeah. There's some more coconut trees. Yeah. Well, that's gone. Yeah, that, that, that's me. Yeah, I'm a homebody. I, I don't. Sure. I like to go and visit places where there's friends, people. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. But just to go see a mountain, well, I've seen mountains before. Yeah, right, it's not, right. It's not like I, yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, the reason we ended up in the hole is that we just never went anywhere else. And I liked the hole because it's just from my background. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma and. You know, my father was born in 1926, and his father was born in 1891, and his father was born in 1860. So my great-grandfather was born before the Civil War. So uh, maybe it's a genetic old school yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's just four generations in 150 years. Yeah. Because I was I was born to an old man who was born to an old man. Yeah. So when I when I found the hole. And the province life there, I just felt so at home. Oh. From growing up in Oklahoma and then ending up in California, right. it, was, it was never, yeah, never like it. Okay? Right. But right. I dug both. And when you like where you're at, why go look somewhere else? Sure, you know? exactly. And uh, she liked it. Uh, when you find a woman you love, why look for anybody else? Exactly. That's what I say. And yeah. so that's how I, uh, we, we look for property around the hole, found what we liked. And uh, started our little, our little farm, and the rest is history. That's how I ended up. Yeah, farm. yeah. What did you think about him when you first saw him? Was it, was it? Uh, <laughs> his face. <laughs> Too much hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But you know, my wife told me when we first met. There was no love there. There was a friendship. I enjoyed her uh, company. She enjoyed being around me. And then the love grew over time. So, of course, that kind of twisted my nose a little bit. What? You didn't fall in love with me right away? No. Marcel's a pretty tiny girl. She's 5'2". And when we... Yeah, 43 kilos. So she's small. I'm six feet tall, and even when we met, I was like 125 kilos. No, it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was. So the, the difference, it was like this huge yeah. monster coming yeah. down off the plane. Yeah. It was like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. I think that has that had a lot to do with it. Um, but after a while, she got, she got used to it, yeah. sort of, I guess. Yeah, because you're smaller now. Is that like. Oh, he's fun. Uh, I, uh, I have lost a bit of weight uh, overall, but in the last, since she started her cooking channel. Oh, um, well, put a plug in on that. Um, What's the cooking channel? Marcel's Homestead Kitchen. And it turns out she's a pretty good cook. Okay. But she she doesn't know how to cook for two. Oh, it's got to be for She cooks for four, four yeah. or six. And the way I was brought up, you know, waste food. She, so you yeah. She doesn't eat leftovers. I don't know if that's a Filipino thing uh, or what, but she doesn't like leftovers, so I it's left to me. You're, you're like me from the clean your plate generation. Exactly. And uh, and the leftovers in the refrigerator, if I don't eat them, they just go bad. So long story short, she cooks way too much food, it's way too tasty, and uh, I'm the only one that, that yeah. eats it. So I gained about thirty pounds. <laughs> Since she started her channel, so it's a long one. I'm saying it's all her fault. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And now that that's a good segue into your channel. How did that come you know, about? I, when I kind of when I was doing my research, when I was chatting even before, uh -huh. when I was chatting with the other girls, uh -huh. and then when I was chatting with her, you want to kind of find out about 
where you're thinking about moving to. You're, gonna, yeah, you're sure. changing your whole life. Sure. Information is power. Exactly. And when you have, the more power you have when you take that leap, the better off you'll be. Right. And when I was doing the research, it took me two weeks to find out how much an egg cost in the middle because I didn't know where to look to find that information. Right. I didn't know. You can't, you, the thing is, in the Philippines, is there's no yellow pages. There's no. Uh, there's. For me, it was so hard to find information about things that I wanted to know. Yeah. yeah. Land prices, uh, the price of goods and services, what is available, what's not available, what's hard to find. What should I bring from the states? Or right. What would be easily available here? It was just a void. Yeah, no, the information that, uh, was, uh, that I found so lacking, things that I wanted to, learn. and so I had the idea that when I come here, I would share my experiences and share what I learned as I learned it, oh. and be able to provide a visit. I was I, I was a business owner, so I was sort of shielded from this circumstance, but. I noticed from, because my businesses went to crap in 2008, the big crash. Yeah. And so many men my age who have been working at a company for 15, 20, 25, yeah. 30 years were laid off. Because the old guys were the ones that were getting paid the most. Sure. Companies were streamlining. Right. So they let the 50-something guy go. Exactly. He's way overqualified for most other jobs and would reasonably expect a high salary. But no companies were affording that. So you just went on unemployment till it exhausted, and then you started eating your assets. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to millions of guys. Yeah. And I thought when I came here, and for me, the, the United States that I grew up in doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Things have changed so much. Yeah. So I felt like an alien in my own country. And um, second divorce, it was just tired of the whole thing. I was tired. Yeah. And I wanted to make a change and, and, and make a change in my life and do something different. And I had the intuition that there were a lot of other guys in my situation who had had careers, uh, maybe didn't have a lot of money, but had built up some assets in their lifetime uh, and were dis disillusioned yeah. with their lives in America. Yeah. And that maybe they would want to uh, come to the Philippines or any other country for yeah. that matter. Yeah. And if I could provide some information to help them along, you know, then, then, that was, then that was the impetus for our channel. And uh, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but with 22,000 subscribers, I think there was a good many of those gentlemen yeah. out there. Yeah. And uh, because I, I, I'm of the age where I don't have a pension. Yeah. And uh, most men my age uh, don't, don't have a retirement pension. Some may, yeah. if they were working for the federal government, yeah. 25 years yeah. Of yeah. But for guys that were uh, didn't have that real sweet job and didn't have a pension, they want to come to the Philippines. Well, they can't compete against a Filipino at our age for the manual labor. No, right? no, no. Way. And the expertise, if competing with a, you're competing against Filipino wages. Yeah. And I can't work with a shovel. And, and keep up with a guy who's only making 350 pesos a day anyway. I, I can't do it. No. And so, if you come here at, at that certain age, a man of a certain yeah. age, you, you need to know, you need to have some ideas on how you can generate some income yeah. when you get here. And the, the change in the visas, just the whole thing. And so yeah. we kind of chronicled our journey, uh, throwing out ideas on. on and real, real time, real numbers. Yeah. Our channel is a lot about numbers. Uh, exactly what you can expect, and not just a vague reference to, oh, you can open up a sorry, sorry store and get enough to get by. That doesn't tell anyone anything. Right. Uh, with our figure, I've done quarterly profit and loss on it, uh, exactly what we spend on everything, uh, and I've done some breakdowns on other businesses yeah. as well uh, to give people real numbers and real information. Yeah. Uh, and, and, in the, in the hope that I can help them make that transition. That's what our challenge is. Yeah, yeah. So, a uh, farmer, no, born, a <laughs> born, is it a born? A born, okay. What did you just say? A foreigner farming in the Philippines. Yeah. And your and channel is? Marcellus Homestead. Okay.
we're going to wrap it up now. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Yeah. And hopefully uh, uh, this was beneficial to you. And uh, let us know in the comments. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye.